Hi, everybody. I'm here today talking with John K. Snyder III about a new book coming out from Clover Press. It's called The Continental Op by Dashiell Hammett. Hi, John. Welcome to our show. I'm glad to have you here as a special guest. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about your involvement in this book, but also just kind of your art in general and, and you know, what, how you do things and your, your history leading up to this moment. Uh, but first, the first thing I want to ask is, uh, how did you get involved in this project, Continental Op? Well, I was contacted by uh, Clover Press to, uh, uh, that they were interested in doing a, uh, a collection of the first five short stories uh, of the Continental Op. And, uh, I had had some previous experience uh, uh, recently working on uh, the noir genre. I had uh, adapted Eight Million Ways to Die, the Lawrence Block novel uh, featuring uh, Matthew Scudder. And I was uh, looking to do more noir projects. So when I was approached by Clover, I just uh, immediately jumped at the chance. And were you already familiar with this book? Uh, well, I was familiar with Dashiell Hammett's work, yes. And and con the Continental Op is... Uh, is uh, uh, mostly uh, character featured in short stories. There's two novels, uh, The Dane Curse and, uh, and uh, of course, Red Harvest, which were originally serialized uh, in chapters and then collected as novels. So, yes, I, and, and Red Harvest is uh, one of my very favorite novels. So, and I've always enjoyed how it's work. Wow. So then this must be an absolute thrill to be able to bring the, the words to life in these illustrations. It, it really is. It's really an honor to uh, to have the opportunity to do this project. Now, you said you already had worked on a, a, a noir adaptation of a book. How is this one different than what you had done previously? Well, uh, uh, it's different in that uh, this is a series of illustrations for a prose collection. Uh, the previous project I'd worked on was a graphic novel. So it was a matter of, uh, of taking the original prose novel and, and translating it into uh, a you know, graphic comic form. In this case, the, we're, we're having the original stories and then I do two, uh, we're having five stories. I'm doing two illustrations to accompany each story. So uh, it's, it's a lot of fun because, you know, in traditional illustration for, for stories and books, like they were originally done, they, uh, they told a part of the story. So within one illustration, you're conveying uh, a lot of a lot. You're conveying as much of the story element uh, that you can within one illustration, and that is a that is a fun uh, challenge to do too. So, so it's a, a way of of telling part of the story uh, with one image, rather than in a graphic novel where you're telling the entire story in a series of, of images and panels. Right. Now, you have done a lot of work in the comic industry going back uh, quite a ways. Uh, can you give me some of, the, some of the highlights of your career, some of the stuff you've really enjoyed working on? Well, I started out with my own uh, creator own property, uh, Fashion and Action, which was a, a, a futuristic comic uh, that I really enjoyed doing. And, and uh, I'm planning on doing more with that, actually. And mm -hmm. uh, then I moved on to... Uh, work on a series of uh, other projects. Uh, I worked on uh, Grindel with Matt Wagner, his, uh, his uh, well-known series. And then I moved on to work with writers John Ostrander and uh, Kim Yell on Suicide Squad in their 80s run. That was uh, a tremendous amount of fun to work on as well. Yeah. And uh, then I uh, worked on a uh, my first foray into uh, doing adaptations of uh, of books was I worked on the Classics Illustrated line uh, that was done with First and Berkeley books uh, that uh, uh, I did the adaptations of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Joseph Conrad's Secret Agent. I worked with Matt Wagner a few more times on uh, Dr. Midnight for DC Comics and Zorro for Dynamite and uh, something that I probably not remembering at the moment, but <laughs> worked on a new, a very, very, just a lot of illustrations and covers. I've, I've had a, a really great opportunity to work with just a lot of really, really great creative people. And, and it's been a, you know, it's been a great ride. And as I said, you know, recently I, I was uh, uh, thrilled to have the opportunity to adapt uh, Lawrence Block's work uh, for, uh, for the 8 million die, uh, ways to die uh, graphic novel. And of course, uh, this this current project. 
your name actually pops up all over the place. And uh, I was actually looking through my Johnny Quest comics recently <laughs> and saw your name pop up on a pin up there. And uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I loved uh, Johnny Quest was uh, my favorite cartoon as a kid. So when Kamiko had the rights to uh, to work on that project, um, I uh, actually submitted a proposal and I ended up doing a uh, gallery piece uh, with uh, for the series, the one you probably saw. Yeah. And uh, actually the editor there uh, on Johnny Quest, Diana Schutz, that's how I ended up getting in touch. She asked me about working on Grendel with Matt Wagner and that's how right. that all started. So. I guess uh, Johnny Quest led to a lot of different roads. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wow. Uh, your illustration also, uh, depending on the project you're working on, takes a different turn. And I was thinking of the the classic illustrated, your um, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde has a very, uh, very stylized look compared to some of your other stuff. And then and then a continental op, like the pictures we can see in your background there, really nice painted graphic kind of style there that uh, doesn't even look you know, comic booky. Uh, what what made you choose to go with this style for Continental Op opposed to other styles that you've done in the past? Well, for for example, when I'm working on different projects, I like to kind of vary. It's always going to end up being my style one way or the other. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, but I like to I like to kind of look at the project and and try to figure out like what kind of approach to use um, to to tell the story. And in the cases of the Classics Illustrated books, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Secret Agent, um, the uh, the prose uh, of that was uh, so dense, you know, uh, in terms of it's just very heavy, you know, heavy uh, uh, dialogue and, and description and such. And I wanted to retain a lot of that in the actual graphic novel. So my approach with the actual images was to counter the, the kind of complicated text was to have almost like a, a storybook type look in, in big flat colors and, and at the time I and, and still love German expressionism and and a lot of that has that kind of cut out graphic style to it or or in, in German expressionistic film like Cabinet of Dr. Caligari which yeah. played perfectly in the Jekyll and Hyde mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was a great approach to that in terms of something like this Continental Op um, again you know uh, uh, again I'm so excited about this because working in this kind of classic format of the original illustrated books where you would have the story and a few illustrations included uh, 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 throughout. And uh, in there, there's much more uh, uh, kind of a rendering style and uh, a little more detail. And again, trying to get elements of story all into one image. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I wanted to try a more illustrative approach for these illustrations. And but in doing so, uh, you know, it still has a lot of my graphic style within it. But but again, with a little more with a little more detail. And and, uh, and again, I was trying to get a blend of I think what fascinates me about this project. One of the many things that fascinates me about it is that, you know, we're looking at stories that are originally published in the early 1920s. So they're literally 100 years old. Yeah. And but so we're looking at a period that is uh, kind of a. a the introduction of uh, technology is modern technology is really starting to come into this era. You, you know, automobiles and phones have only been around, you know, uh, a few decades at this point, for example. So I tried to kind of get uh, a feeling of uh, something old, something new, because there are things represented within the stories that are used in the story to, to solve the various cases that were still new. So there's almost like a, a neo-futuristic <laughs> uh, feel to it, you know, within the context of of the new technology that was coming in at the time, and I was trying to get the, a little bit of that that kind of feel in in the rendering as well. If that makes uh, if that makes sense, for sure. Uh, yeah, there's, there's one story that involves uh, you know using fingerprints, and that was and that was a new thing at the time, at least at least as Hammett describes it in in one particular story. Wow. So that's a little bit of of my thinking process as I worked on this project. That's great. Now, do you kind of, uh, as you're working, immerse yourself in the era? Uh, like what kind of music, do you listen to music and such when you're when you're working? Yes, uh, uh, and again, you know, I, I listen to all kinds of different music, uh, uh, you know, while I'm working, but, uh, but in the case of this project, you know, I listen to some old, uh, you know, ragtime music, uh, uh, Scott Joplin, of course, and, and uh, old movie music, like silent film music. 
uh, you know, listen to a little bit of that and uh, old, old songs from that period, just to get, again, to get in that feel like, you know, what were, what was someone listening to at that time? You know, what was playing on the phonograph? You know, what yeah. was, you know, what was the song that was, what movie had they come out of the theater seeing? You know, I, I mm. kind of looked a little bit at silent film and, and uh, uh, just try to get a general feel of, I felt like by listening to the music, it helped kind of put me in that, a little bit in that time frame, and uh, right. and and it discovered some new things along the way too. Now, did you have to do a lot of research in terms of like fashion and that kind of thing as well? Yes, I uh, uh, I did want to try to make it as accurate as possible. Uh, so I did, you know, thankfully because we have the ability to research things in such great detail now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, for example, one of the sequences was involving uh, one of the illustrations was involving a car and. Uh, the great thing about nowadays is uh, there's, you know, people love to collect old cars and they love to take uh, many photos of them and make them available on the internet. So I was able to find, I, there was a time where, you know, trying to find some of the reference for this period would have been very difficult. I would have been happy to find like a library book that had a couple of photos, an old, old, dark photos, you know, gray fuzzy photos, <laughs> right. yeah. you know, a 1920 Model T or something. And, uh, and in this case, I saw completely, you know, I found photos of completely restored Model T, like from all angles, close-ups. and in high definition. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's wonderful. You know, yep. if, you, if you need to, to research, it's, it's very, you know, uh, old telephones and with the clothing. Uh, uh, the clothing was, you know, something I, I looked into as well. And uh, again, uh, there's so much more available uh, to find when you're researching things now. And it's part of the fun too, is, uh, you know, again, one of the things I enjoy about my project to, in different time periods and such is, you know, along the way you learn things too, while you're, while you're working on these. So. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the use of color in your illustrations here, because you're very, very selective with where you place your colors. For this project, I, uh, I wanted to be, I wanted to make sure that it had a feel that it was from a different time. I mean, it's, it's, you can tell by the clothing and, uh, you know, what's, you know, what's on the tables, you know, what's in the background, et cetera. But I wanted to kind of really push that home with, uh, the use of color, uh, in the project. So it's got very limited color in that, you know, it's, it's, uh, but it's, but it's a wide range within that limit, you know, so there's a mm -hmm. lot of shades of, of grays and browns and, and, uh, and you know, kind of like cream colors and all that sort of thing. And, and the whole point is, is to try to give, I think in some cases I was thinking about uh, trying to make them all, almost look like old photographs, yeah, you know, like from, mm -hmm. from another time, but with like little hints of color in it uh, here and there. And uh, so, so that whole approach, I would, I would be, I was very careful about to, to kind of help create that, that kind of other, a place in another time sort of sort of image and also i think it's it was for me personally i i was kind of making a nod to some of the old illustrations uh, uh back in back in the old days of illustrated books uh sometimes uh just because of printing reasons they had limited amount of color to work with right and so even it wasn't necessarily a conscious it wasn't a choice uh because they wanted it to be you know somewhat monochromatic sometimes they didn't have any choice but to have it printed that way so, you know, a lot of old illustrations and books you'll see will be in, you know, uh, uh, a limited range of tones. And I kind of wanted to capture a little bit of that feel, too. Okay. And do you have an illustration that you are most proud of out of these these ones that you did for this book? Oh, gosh. I like them all. <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I'm real happy with how the whole thing turned out. I yeah. Really, I, 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 really, uh, uh, I really can't pick one. There's... There's things I really like in all of them. Uh, I was really happy to work on this project. So, uh, you know, I like them all. Okay, good. <laughs> it's like asking you to pick your favorite. And I hope child. everybody else does too. You know, I really do. I, I hope that uh, that everybody else enjoys the uh, the work and along with, uh, you know, this this uh, uh, classic work by, uh, by Hannah. Well, and I think you play such an important role here because this is a public domain book that's been reprinted. These stories have been reprinted a bunch of times. So what's going to draw people to pick up this 
edition in particular, it's going to be your illustrations, and you pull it off really well. They're eye-catching. They are they're they're exciting. You can feel the energy in them, and so I think that uh, people really love just keep as they're reading. All of a sudden, oh man, there's a great picture to go along with it. Well, thank you. Thank, thanks. I you know again, it's a it's a real honor to be involved with this project, and I you know wanted to do the absolute best uh, work that I can uh, on it, and I really wanted to help illuminate it for uh, illuminate the stories for for present day for you know i'm thinking of uh longtime readers uh of, of hammett's work but i'm also hoping that you know we can find some some new readers of his mm -hmm. work that this is their first introduction to hammett and they can discover you know all this fantastic work that he did all the continental op stories and and all the you know the sam spade maltese falcon and, and just yeah. all this uh, other work and it's you know, it's a, uh, it's really a great writer and, and they're really great stories. So, you know, my, my hope was not only to do something that would be new for the longtime Hammett fan, uh, but to also uh, introduce uh, new readers as well. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, is there anything else going on in your career right now that you love to <laughs> mention to people? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I'm looking forward to doing more with my uh, original series, Fashion and Action, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll have more details on that uh, in the months to come. So that's uh, that's on my table. I have uh, some other noir-based projects that I can't go into great detail about it at the moment, but okay. I'm very excited about. It's a genre that I love, and uh, I'm looking forward to... Uh, doing more in that genre. I'd love to do uh, more with Continental Op and Dashiell Hammett as well, of course. And, uh, uh, you know, looking forward to more exciting projects with Clover Press. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of neat things uh, uh, coming down the road. Uh, and I, again, as I, I've mentioned before, I'm very, uh, very grateful to Ted Adams and Robbie and uh, all the people, uh, uh, Hank, and all the people at Clover for for uh, all your work on on uh, Clover and, and this project. I'm just really happy to be a part of this. And was happy to get uh, an opportunity to be involved in it. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm again, I'm looking forward to more uh, with Clover in the future. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for joining us for this interview, John. It was a pleasure to talk to you and get a little bit of insight into the way you work and uh, the way you approached these illustrations. Yeah. And I encourage everybody who's watching to check out uh, Continental Op. You can order a copy off of cloverpress.us or, you know, anywhere where you can order books. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you for having me.